six six thirty one. Additions to the agenda. You have one. It's a personnel item. What is yours? Because I have a couple. Oh. Okay. And uh, so that that's an addition. Yes. And I would uh, like to bring up our Thursday fire department meeting and question about whether we want to see if Callis and the fire department would be interested in postponing it, given that Montpelier is having a big meeting about the future of downtown Montpelier at that same time, or whether we want to, as Gina put it, divide and conquer and just have some of us go to the fire department meeting. Yeah, I'm, going, I'm definitely going to the fire department meeting. Okay. Well, we talked uh, about it at the time. Yeah, okay. I wrote it down, and then we're doing the... Let's see, I'm just looking. <coughs> what about this debris thing? Do you have that in here? I have Oh, that. update it. No. The TA report is where I was going to ask you guys about debris. Okay. Okay, we can do it that way. Then the other thing is I want to bring up the repairs that I want to do. That That's though. an event item. Yeah, you listed in your report. Okay, yep. All right, perfect. Discuss maintenance. Okay, perfect. Okay. Um, review of minutes, July 24th. Gina, could we rely on you to annotate any changes? Anybody have any motion to accept the minutes? We have a second. Second. We have a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 You always appear to have to do that. No discussion. Or do you want discussion? Well, <laughs> we could. Well, Robert, we'll say, should we have discussion? I'm not overruling the chair, but oh, that's why I just made the motion not to. Oh, so we made the motion. Sometimes we do discuss. Sometimes we figured we've already settled it all by then. So, <laughs> I, if you I, want I, me I'm to, I'm learning your procedure. Well, no. Okay, so if you want to stick to strict procedure, which is fine with me. Which I, I like gray areas, so just go, go with the flow. <laughs> no, that's okay, because <laughs> I sense from you that you'd rather do it differently. So we can do it exactly by the book, which is fine with me, if you'd like to. But anyway, we already made the motion. It's already been passed. So there you go. <laughs> Did you say I, though? I didn't really see you raise your hand. Yeah, I didn't see you raise your hand. Okay. So it's yeah, passed unanimously. For, for a positive, for people. not a negative. Yes, I got that. Move in. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a short meeting. It's, <laughs> it's, it's not, not short yet. 
Yeah, I'm not taking any of that down. <laughs> That's just not I'm trying to suggest a D two A. Okay, it's the only vanilla meeting. Um, <laughs> vanilla meeting. Okay, so we did the minutes. The next thing we have is public comment. I don't see any public here. Does anybody else see public? Because I definitely don't want to overrule or leave out public. No public. Got it. Okay, setting of the 2023-2024 property tax rates. All right. We talked about this last time. Yes, sir. For maybe this is for Zoe and myself. This is um, this issue is is um, kind of a foregone conclusion because the budget's already been set. And is there any is there any latitude to to change this rate, or is it just what's normal procedure? Because um, I'm all new to this. Normally, we've gone along with at this point in time, we've gone along with the percentage increase. We did talk about it. A few months ago, that if we want to shave it closer, we had that ability to do that. But mm -hmm. that would, and then we could try to find some savings if we're over budget and put some effort money to it. I suppose well, we 10 did minutes. find some savings with this, with yeah. the reforecasting of salaries and benefits, yeah. with a huge caveat that any yeah. change in employee elections could certainly affect this about. this figure. Right. But um, you know, and there are additional savings that could be, for example, uh, we have a budget of 15000 next year for Emerald Ash Borer response. Um, yeah. And we could decide yeah. to use ARPA funds for that. We yeah. could also decide to reallocate the current year, which will be a future discussion, expenditure right. to ARPA. So um, my question is, there's only 10 minutes allocated to this. For the no, most that's part, this is no I understand the question fully. Yeah. It's, it's not... We haven't generally changed course at this point, though I think we could. We could say, oh, let's just go with 5%, instead of 5.8. Mm -hmm. And of course, then we might have a shortfall, we might not, but we do have But there's been a lot of discussion and debate and whatever going into this, so yeah. this is well done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, but we have had a lot. Uh, yeah, I would say a couple things about that. Yeah. Um, after last meeting, when we took a look at the um, the average increase over the last several years, and we saw that because it uh, had gone down in a previous year, that the average increase was, I don't remember what we said, but it's under 2%. It's like a couple percent, yeah. yeah. It, uh, it went that, down like 3.8 at least for one of them last year, uh -huh. so yeah. It's so it, uh, that, which is under the rate of inflation, <coughs> which, so it seemed reasonable to me to not explicitly transfer ARPA funds merely for the, the sake of getting the tax rate down. Uh, on the other hand, um, what we, you know, the, the things that we've been talking about using the ARPA funds for in the future will have an effect of getting the tax rate down for next year and or the year after that. So I'm fine just waiting on that discussion. Okay, thank you for that explanation. So it is 13 and 3 quarters cents, looks like, right? The increase? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just under 14 cents. But of course, it went down last year, which is what happened. The year before, it was like 240 something for 23. <coughs> oh, you've got the tax rate 22, must have been. So that's 238. But then the year before that, FY22, it was the tax rate was $2.47. So it went down because the school had gone down. Ours didn't go down, so the school didn't. So, so they went up, see, they went up only almost 10 cents. Yeah, I was going to say the majority of the it's increase 10 cents. this year is the is Yeah, the school. I mean, we're not up that, so when you figure it like that, it's like, well, okay, but we're not up that much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're only up 4 cents. So, I, I, I don't know, I, 
think we're okay. I mean, there are ways. I mean, we could cheap it down. No, no, no. We I'm could. Just curious on no, no. You're right. I mean, we haven't really at this point in time. We really haven't because we'd already put our heads to it. We've been batting around for months. Yeah. We're okay. This is acceptable, and that's kind of what we said at the last meeting. Yeah. But I, I am not. I'm not scoffing at your. No, 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 just it's a good question. I'm just curious on procedure and how yeah. things go around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. I think just ultimately, if I understand it, I mean, the select board is setting the tax rate, so realistically, you could do whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, in a way, tonight we're doing this. It's already been done in the it's past. And it's, that's exactly. what we're well, doing. Well, I know. You're asking a procedure question, basically, about what our role has been at this point in time. Yes, At this point exactly. in time, we've generally gone, and then we're all good. But, okay. yeah. I get it. Yeah, yeah. I think the key is you could make the tax rate whatever you want. However, yeah. then you have to figure out how to pay right. the town's bills. Yeah. So if that tax rate, <laughs> the tax rate does not cover the town's bills, yeah. then we have a future problem that the select board needs to Or we address. could raise that, or we could raise the taxes and and have more money to spend. Right now, in theory. That wouldn't go over very well. I, I, I'm not <laughs> saying it would. I'm just talking so, about theory. So, Mr. Hess, I would like to make a motion. <laughs> no, to no. Us. I just want to say that. You're always answerable to the taxpayers, I, I and I want, and I always want to be in a strong position when I answer the questions. Without a doubt. Yeah. I'm, so there you go. I am a fiscal conservative. I am too. So we agree I, I on am, something. That's nice a, to see. I am not a tax <laughs> progressive. No, nope, I'm not either. I know. Yeah. So, so okay. So you were. I'd be happy to make a motion to yeah. accept the tax rate as, as presented. It will be finalized the next meeting. No. 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 This is, this this is, is the is actual it. setting of the tax rate. Oh, right. I'm looking for the, the tax paper. Go out. Hmm? I'm looking at the wrong paper. Yeah. You're looking at the minutes? Uh, From no. last time. Yeah. I didn't yeah. get on. And then, then uh, Zoe, you will be answering questions. Your phone will be hanging <laughs> off the phone. <laughs> because the tax bills go right out. So the, um, just for the record, as presented, is for a homestead tax rate of 2.5230 and a non-homestead tax rate of 2.4027. Do we have a second on the motion? Then we can have further discussion. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> You're the second? Yeah. Carl's seconding the motion. Now we're going to open up for discussion per request from the select board member. <laughs> that, was the, that was the last one. Any more discussion? Just so you know, so essentially tomorrow I draft a memo that goes to the treasurer, that goes to kind of everybody here, and like the listers will be locking down the grand list, doing the pieces of parts that they need to do. That kind of goes over to, from a treasurer perspective, from a tax bill, so all the little things that need to be done from right. a system perspective activate so that we actually get a PDF of every single tax bill. And then <coughs> from there, goes to printer, and then yes, will be mailed out. But yes, this is... This is the night of setting the rate that is the foundation for a memo tomorrow that puts everything in motion. Yeah. And if there's any questions about Robert's rules, Carl is much, is much more uh, versed in Robert's rules as I have sat through many meetings with Well, no, it sounds like you've been brushing up on them, so it's definitely here. <laughs> oh, it's, <laughs> it's, been, my, it's been my reading material for the last, since the last meeting. For two weeks I've been reading it every night. Oh, good. Okay. Okay. It's surprisingly <laughs> readable. I have to find yeah. it um, I might bypass them. So, is there further discussion, given Robert's rules? <laughs> <laughs> All in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it. Um, okay. So, that took care of setting the tax rate. And uh, consideration of homestead filing penalty waiver. I have an answer to Scott's question that he hasn't asked yet. What's that? Uh, what do we usually do with this? Yeah, no, I was going to fill them in on the background, like, go okay. for it. I have, I have the, the um, usual yeah. motion that we pass on this. Uh, we, uh, Deidre did to incorporate all the information last year, but uh, other than that, in the past bunch of years, we passed a, a motion um, that says the town is allowed to assess an 8% penalty for residents who file their homestead declaration late. The town also has the option to waive the penalty for everyone. There are also certain hardship exemptions and the town has chosen to waive the late filing penalty in the past for a number of reasons. One, the penalty only affects those who do, do file but file late. Those who are required to file but don't file are not penalized if they're not caught. The town's revenues, two, the town's revenues are not affected by whether someone declares a homestead in town or not. Three, 
it is in the town's interest to encourage accurate information about who is a resident here, and waiving the penalty encourages people to file a homestead declaration, even if it's late. And four, for a time, the state allowed a homestead declaration to remain in effect until the landowner rescinded it. The select board does not see a good reason for reverting to a system requiring filing each year. And on that basis, the select board has waived the homestead declaration late filing penalty. The precedent has been set. The precedent has been set after much thoughtful discussion. Yeah, so. yeah. It's, yeah, it's not binding, but that's that's what we've done for the last so what, half dozen have, years. We or have so. to adopt it every year, though. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we can um, we can make a motion, then we can discuss it further. I'll make the motion. I, I was to my esteemed colleague here. Yeah. She, she doesn't want to make the motion. I'll make the well, motion. Well, well, maybe she'll make a second. I don't know. Nope. She, she might have controversy on this. Maybe she's well, first we can make the second, then we can discuss it. I know. Further. I, I, can't, I can't second my motion. I know, you can't. Okay, we're looking for a second. Oh, I'll second it. Oh, ooh. It's it's with, 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 with reservation. Okay, now we're going to open up for discussion for Robert's rules, just like we're member informed tonight that we should be following more closely. We have any more discussion about the homestead filing penalty waiver? No? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. I, I the eyes appear to have it, they do have it. Okay, good. Ah, okay, the next item is discuss maintenance of town office building. This is something I discussed with Gina a little bit. Um, so, as you know, I had fixed the roof. We had a leak, the leak is fixed. I had cut the sheetrock out of the ceiling, that needs to be fixed, and we need to put some insulation above it. I have uh, reached thank out you, to- Thank you for doing that. Yeah. No problem. So, um, you know, I'm not charging because obviously I'm not a contractor. The, um, but what I did do is I reached out to a town resident that had been recommended by you, Todd Whitehead, and he is way too busy to do it, to do any work on the building. The building needs some work on the outside, which I went over pretty closely. And by, and by the way, he has a tremendous amount of damage in his basement that he's yeah, trying to do his own house. Yeah, I know. He had a river going through there. I spoke to him this morning. So then um, there's a young fellow that's been doing some work at my place, good, good carpenter, his dad's awesome. And I asked him if he'd be willing to do it. I went over the whole building with him. And then Gina mentioned the fact they should have insurance, which they do. So I reached out to them today. I just need to get an email to send the proof of insurance to. And uh, he'll work for 35 bucks an hour. He's a good kid. He'll come in Friday afternoon when uh, Patricia's in here and fix the ceiling, do the insulation in there, because I want someone to be here, because obviously I can't give him the code to get in. Mm -hmm. um, and then we went over the outside. The outside needs some trim replaced. Um, pretty much everywhere on the building. There's rotten trim, there's a bunch of rotten boards on the side of the porch. It's gonna take a little bit of digging uh, to get it all fixed, which it needs to be, and it also needs to be scraped and painted. Um, also, where the flower bed's up against the siding, they need to be pushed back, we need to put some flashing in there so the siding doesn't rot off the building. There's a lot of little things that need to be done. So, I just wanna discuss that with the rest of the select board. It's, we're not looking at thousands and thousands of dollars, but it could be two or 3,000 by the time we got done. So I don't know what you think, but I, I think it would be a good move to get this guy involved and maybe get a bid on the painting and scraping. And then if you want to put it out for a bid, you can. Uh, I do have one name, but maybe we'll find somebody else. But the problem is that it's starting to get late in the season, so mm -hmm. you kind of have to mm -hmm. get it done. I think we should move forward. You're thinking yeah. it's not going to be exorbitant, and you've no. got somebody yeah. he can start Friday. So. Yeah. So I hope to take away at it. You know what I mean? It's like I first we get the inside thing done, and then we'll work on the outside. Yeah. I, I would I would guess that um, the number of people who have the skills who have yeah. a lot of time on their hands yeah. is uh, very low. Right yeah. Now. Well, he doesn't have a lot of time on his hand, but he works for me some, doing okay. some carpentry uh -huh. work there. His father's got other so jobs he's going. With his yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. he's a, he, a good okay. kid. So you who's going to oversee the the work? I, I will. Yeah. And I'll okay. and uh, you know I go by here all the time. Right. He'll tell me which day he's going to be here. I'll pick out which area we're going to work on. Mm -hmm. First, we're going to do the inside. The outside, of course, he doesn't need people here, so he can work on the outside whenever. So, so to be clear, he's not going to be doing the scraping and the painting, though? Not him, no. Okay. But so, he does have a name of somebody that could do it, but if you want to put that out for bid, I, I don't know what you want to do. Well, that's up to the board. Um, I, practically, personally would, I personally would move forward. Practically? In my opinion, we're out of time to yeah. go through a bid process and yeah. do all of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so the the like, likelihood of us having this work done before yeah. winter yeah. is probably not going to happen. Um, if we have somebody who yeah. can do that, yeah. 
probably would be better to go ahead and move on and get onto their schedule would yep. be my thought if this were my home and I was trying to get yep. something done before winter. Okay. That's what I think, but I so, leave it but, up to everybody else. But, but he can't. He can't do the painting. As well. No, but is there, there's some relative of his that does painting, gave me a name, contact information. Maybe it's a woman. I think she could maybe do it before fall. If we, What I was going to suggest is we'll just do one side at a time, and then maybe she can start doing the painting behind the repairs. That way we can get okay. the whole thing done. Okay. That's my thought. So I guess a motion might read, I authorize the uh, select board chair to proceed with a project uh, doing maintenance and scraping and painting on the town office building with the uh, um, with the work done by local contractors that yeah. he uh, chooses uh, up that he deems appropriate yeah. up to a total cost of five thousand. Painting is probably going to cost more. Than. The repairs will be under five. I think the painting or have around that. And, or instead of putting a limit on it, um, I can and, just surprise you of the cost. And, and, and we'll and we'll keep the yeah. select board apprised of the, yeah. of the cost and progress. Yeah. Yeah. I can do that. I mean, you're not going to spend 50 grand, so. Oh, right. hell no. I mean, that, that, my point and is. And the thing it's is, it's incremental. Right. It's like I can give, I can tell you what it's costing. My, my point is, it's not, it's not going to be that big. So that, yeah. At, yeah. at your discretion, and you will give us. Yeah. yeah. The painter can probably give you a ballpark price. What's that? It's the painter can right. probably yes. give you a ballpark yes. price. Yes. And I can bring that to you. Yeah. And, but I'm probably going to reach out to her right away and say, hey, what's your schedule? What do you exactly. charge? Blah, blah, blah. Okay. You're making the motion, Bob? Yeah, I'm just trying to capture what it is. Second, that we can discuss this some more. I'll oh, you'll second it. Okay. So, how how's this? Um, we I move to authorize the select board chair to oversee um, see maintenance work and and painting on the town office. Exterior. All of this is exterior? Except for the um, repair in there. I've got to do it. Okay, on the town office. Using yeah, local workers. Rehabilitation is not just maintenance, it's actually fixing yeah. it, whatever. Hmm. Maintenance and, and rehabilitation. Using local workers he deems appropriate with a chair keeping the select board apprised at each meeting of the progress and budget. Yep. Does that sound good? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And, and cost? One okay. last question. Yep. Um, I believe you would want to use ARPA funds for this, but please confirm that. It would certainly be a good use of those funds. Mm -hmm. And when yeah. we get to the town garage, you're going to see that we may have some delays in that particular project. So Why, why wouldn't we? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. It's not going to be a huge amount of money anyways. Present, present, present value. It wasn't using it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So it would be worth less less. That's part of the motion? Yes. Sure. So... Further discussion? No. no. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. The next item is designation of town delegate to 2023 VLCT annual meeting. This I failed to say that this particular meeting is held in South Burlington this year. Okay. For anyone that may consider going, the location may. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just okay. so you know, the location alternates generally between Killington and uh, actually, usually it's uh, the fairgrounds in Essex. Um, sure, it's at the Double Tree in South Burlington. Okay. okay. The Chittenden County in Killington. So, this is a good opportunity to. Um, yeah, meet other people involved in VLCT to get a lot of information about how to um, be a better select board member, uh, find out about common issues that the VLCT <coughs> members have. You've been to it almost every year, right? A bunch of times. Yeah. yeah. So it's only it's an hour and a half? Uh, well, it's a, it's a day-long or two-day-long event. Um, but uh, the actual meeting actual is uh, an hour and a half or so, two, uh, two hours. It's, um, it's three annual meetings. It's um, 
the VLCT itself, passive, the insurance, and VERB, which is a retirement fund. Uh, but um, the la latter two are often fairly perfunctory. But it's good information. But don't you, um, isn't there some discussion before the 1 o'clock? I mean, have you always been I mean, there, there are a lot of workshops yeah, that's throughout what I the day. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So it goes, starts early and goes later. Right, yeah. right. Well, any select board member can attend yeah. the full conference. Exactly. So. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, so the question that we are facing today is who will be the voting representative who will speak for us and vote for us? And actually, it's even just voting for us because I, I think they, the rules allow in, any select board member who's there to you know, speak up. So you're looking for somebody that can guarantee to be there? Pretty much, to be, yeah. To yeah. be a representative. But to be clear, from my perspective, these are things that they are trying to move forward in le legislature. A lot of it is, yeah. yes. And it, it doesn't mean that that's actually going to happen. It means they're going to try to make it mm -hmm. happen. So and they, what they do is they have various positions on different issues. Of course. And then, you know, they, they, so you may vote yes, I want to do blah, blah, <coughs> and they may advocate for that in legislature, but it may not happen. It may not right. Get right. right. It may not get out the door. Even get to a committee. But, exactly. but the League of Cities and Towns is influential in the yeah. legislature. So we have been... No, it's a good thing to do. I'm not knocking. I'm just yeah. trying to be clear on what the right. procedure is. So we um, we have not participated in any of the committees that, that vet these proposals. Uh, so, But we have made comments on them on yeah. the floor. Yeah. And some of the things that we've stopped is uh, there was um, one year when the proposal was to label natural gas a clean fuel, uh, for example. Uh, another year, the, uh, there was a proposal pushed by law enforcement to allow law enforcement to steal from citizens using the process of um, civil forfeiture and then keep the money that they take from people. And, uh, that, and you know, a few of us um, spoke up against that and it was voted down. So, yeah, so it's pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, and really, this decision doesn't have to be made tonight for the delegate. I more put it on here. Oh, well, I think we should make it. Well, well, if, well, John's not people, here, and maybe yeah, unless, you want to think about unless it. Unless oh, yeah. select board members would like to go read about town fair. Yeah, maybe fair Scott wants to go, you, you know. Yeah. 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 I'd like to go, but not be the delegate. Why not? Why not? Well. Be too much responsibility? I think other people would speak up more knowledgeably than me at this point. Yeah, yeah. really. Don't give, you, you give yourself enough the only one that can go. Don't. Some people just talk off the top of their head. No, like me? I never did. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. I mean, didn't jump right in. You're right? a resident with feedback to share. Yeah, you have... and you're a select board member. And, and one of the things, things that we yeah. we often do is we get the yeah. proposed legislative agenda and the changes ahead yeah. of time, and, and we, we look through it yeah. and give you feedback to bring to them, so you're not entirely on your own. Yeah, you're not just blindsided when you get there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. we have we have uh, we have all the stuff in front of us, don't we? We always go through it. Yeah, and we say, oh. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And we yes, say blah, 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 blah. I once went to someone on Planning Commission fairly early, and Amy, I think, just joined this, like, or something in St. John, in St. Jay. I think it was St. Jay. Yeah. And it was, it's kind of informative. You meet people, whatever. I, I think it'd be a great opportunity for you. Thanks. You do this. And Zoe, yeah, it's something we can discuss because you may want to attend the full day, two days of the conference, and I can help you. I can sign you up for that as well. I mean, you can as well on the LCT's website, but I can. Also, help yeah. facilitate that when I'm signing up myself, and because I, I attend Great. the full two days. Well, there you go. So, yeah. do you want to take that plunge right now? Sure. Okay. Excellent. Boy, you're bold. Yeah, and you'll, <laughs> and you'll let us know. Maybe some of us will go for one of the days just to the conference. Yeah. Or, yeah. Or, just let yeah. me know if anyone yeah. I can help. I think I signed Carl up last year, but yeah. if anyone, you, I think you're welcome to sign yourself up as well on VLCT's website, but I'm also happy to help with that yeah. for anyone that would like to. Great. I'm mostly just interested in the workshop, so if anyone else wants to be the delegate, please no. let me know. If you're definitely going, then in case none of us wind up going, we should have representation. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for stepping up. So do we have motion that? Yeah. yeah. yeah so I, I nominate Zoe Christensen to represent the town of East Montpelier at the 2023 annual meetings of the Vermont League of Cities and Towns and associated organizations. You got a second? Further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Very 
Uh, okay, the next item on our agenda is Town Garage Project Update. Discuss dissolution of Town Garage Facility Improvement Committee. So the long and short of where we are with the Town Garage Project is we need to get a wetlands consultant to look at this site. Um, uh, one, Kathleen Gent, was the first one to notice that there's wetlands, potential wetland implications on the site, suggested I reach out to the state, which I did, and received a response back that said, yes, you really need to get this looked at by a wetlands consultant before we move forward. Okay. Um, so there's a map in your documents that shows um, the, it's kind of probably where we would go with the building. Guthrie believes that when someone were to look at this, it may not be as wet as the state originally thought it would be, but we have to have a consultant go and do that, and they need to do a wetlands delineation. And first and foremost, we need to decide where and how we yeah. can construct on this particular parcel. So we lined up someone to come out? I just got this this afternoon. Oh, and I need wow. select board approval before I. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, so, I is no. Yeah, correct. So um, I did note I included for you the list um, of the consultants that are on the state website. Right. Obviously, there are some. I, that I are like I like every one of these. I know everyone these got people personally, and I think they're all very very good. Really. I have. Well, I did email with I did email with the select board member who is not here tonight with John Jewett because given his previous experience thought and I did notice someone on this list who was from Hardwick. So um, John does have familiarity with this particular consultant, Michael Lou Smith, who's with Arrowwood Environmental in Hardwick. And John has worked with him previously and did recommend that particular individual. Otherwise, their name's on the list to me. So if the board has worked with any of these individuals, certainly let me know. Otherwise, I was kind of highlighting names that were closer to our location. There's yeah. one in Montpelier. There's some charge of travel. Someone in Randolph. Just, you know, to me, if we have people that are closer than... Yeah. And certainly a lot in the Burlington, Chittenden County yeah, area. So, closely anyway, because there's um, a charge for travel time anyway. Well, we well, don't really want to get people from Massachusetts, personally. I mean, I think we should reach out to close people and see what yeah. the time frame is. And pick so, the question is, how do you want to do this? I mean, I can, we can, I can start with the person that John Jewett has worked with in the past. Um, I don't know if we would need to RFP. I have no idea what something like this costs. This is out of my wheelhouse. So I don't know what we will be looking at for this. Well, we'll just find out what it costs. Reach out to somebody and find out if they can do it. If they can't, then we need to move to somebody else. And then part of the discussion needs to be what's the charge. I mean, I imagine there'll be an initial visit they have to pay for it. Or not. I imagine you do for just an initial visit. I don't know. I would think so. But we'll just find out. I don't know. We'll just find out. Is time of the essence if we wait to these people to give us facts and figures? Or do you need to well, hire somebody? First right? and foremost, I think reaching out to some to yeah. even see who has capacity because yeah. from my brief reading on this, they need to be able to see the area when they can see water, which mm -hmm. means we have a limited amount of time before they're going to actually be able to see water that's not frozen. So well, I don't know what kind of. Yeah. Winter impacts mm -hmm. may exist yeah. or may not. I, again, I don't know what this process is. Um, Why don't you call the guy from Arrowwood and just uh, yeah, that's what I was with him and yeah. just get yeah. a sense of how much uh, what the process involves, how much she might charge, yeah. and yeah. Um, report back to us next time. Does that make sense? That's fine with me. Is that a good time? Yeah. Frame? We've no, got if, if, we, if you email us and say you can come out next week and just charge us, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fine, yeah. do it. Yeah, schedule. Yeah. Because yeah. I don't want to get behind on this. Right. Like, well, that's the forward. thing. It's, yeah. yeah, it's, I mean, certainly time is of the essence in the sense yes. that if we do want to consider a lot of our ARPA funds to go towards this process, this is where yeah. 18 months is not as long as you think. And it's no. less than 18 months now. But This is a necessary step, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So it is. Um, it makes sense yeah. to just do it. Yeah. Try to understand the, the project. If, if this is deemed a wetland and we cannot, Build a town garage. 
Are there alternative sites or we just are not going to have a town garage? Waitsfield currently has an RFP out to try to hire an architect engineer and their particular plan states that they would be building on their current site. While not ideal, that would, that would there be is, a, that is a potential. Would not be a, will not be the best alternative, but I so guess we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Because yeah. I think it's fine. Okay. Uh, how's that? Sure. Yeah. So and that's sure. the point the, in the wetlands consultant. We could yeah. find out that what has been noted here that's kind of been done by looking at maps right, and no, topography and things like yeah. that is not really here. Right. No, I, no, so, I, I heard you. So I, I have a request for a question for you to ask him when you talk to him. Mm -hmm. That is, um, there was a recent end of term U.S. Supreme Court decision about uh, navigable waters of the U.S. and what that means. And uh, the, the MAGA majority threw out precedent about what that means. And um, as I understand it, removed a lot of protections for wetlands. But, but I, I have not read it. Uh, and frankly, I haven't read a lot of the new, news coverage about it because it came out while I was on vacation or just before I left. So what I'd like you to ask is, um, does that decision affect the way that he delineates wetlands right now? And if it does, I would like us to have a discussion about whether we want them to be delineated in our town, or for this project at least, according to the old standard. Good question. Yeah. Okay. Relaxing the environmental standards. I, I heard when that, when that it yeah. really came out. So, um, as part of this agenda item, it is discuss the solution of Town Garage Facility Improvement Committee. The reason this is here is um, we have had a couple of meetings and we haven't been tending to the open meeting law, which is minutes, et cetera, et cetera. So it would be a lot easier if we didn't have the committee and we didn't have to worry about that. Basically, we would have some informal discussions among a few of us, but everything is brought to the select board anyway. So, so I think we should dissolve it. Citizen that would like to come to a select board yeah. meeting, the more the yeah, yeah. meeting. Right. So if a a citizen, a resident has uh, some views on the town garage process mm -hmm. and w uh, is a little hesitant to speak up at a select board meeting but would like to you know, get some input from people who, mm -hmm. who are involved. Who should they talk to about that? They could talk to Gina, okay. myself, yeah. um, road foreman okay. about the town garage okay. easily enough. Phone call. Yeah. Okay. Easy cheesy. Yeah. As so. we go through this, Vision. We need to have discussions on who is the quote unquote project team per se, like who are the stakeholders, you yeah. know, and I've yeah. listed here that we would be, I would want to run this past the planning commission. The planning commission yeah. writes a town plan for us, looks forward, future, future how, the, how the town is evolving. To me, they're an important stakeholder mm -hmm. and should be a part of this process. Mm -hmm. Energy committee, of course, would be a part of this process. We would like to have some energy efficiencies in this building. Mm -hmm. The DRB will be involved as our development review board. What are we going to be building? So I think some of this, I'm looking to the select board for help as we go forward of how this looks. I don't believe anyone on this select board has been involved in a, in a project of this nature, of this size for the town, because I believe the fire department, which was the last structure built in any way comparable to this, was done prior to any members here were on the board. So it's new for all of us. So we need to figure out how this goes, which is also why I believe that everything is coming to the select board now. There's mm -hmm. really no reason. I think that committee was really formed to talk about location, sites, what to do. It was more of that very preliminary. We're now getting into this. Everything's going to come to you all for decisions before moving forward. Mm -hmm. So okay. well, One question I've gotten is... Uh, why we even need an RFP for uh, a special design? Are there not standardized designs for town garages out there that we could just take and say, okay, we're going to build a box here and so we're going to use somebody else's design? What we're experiencing right now was exactly my concern and why we need an RFP. Mm -hmm. You have to know where you're putting that building and what the implications are where that building's going to go. Mm -hmm. As we see, we thought we had a great site that's right adjacent to this one. There may have be complications with that. I have said since day one when we started talking about this that my concern was always the siting of the building, mm -hmm. not the construction of a steel building. Mm -hmm. 
these buildings are relatively simple. Mm -hmm. They're not that complicated. Figuring out where you put where you're putting it is the problem. So the RFP will be the Kathleen's building. It will be more on that's the to get the architect side. engineer. The, the it would the engineer component to it, yes. And the engineer component would be the siting. Of yeah. It? Okay. Yeah. But meanwhile, we're going to go ahead on working on the siting side. So taking some. Well, of the we're getting a stuff. wetlands consultant. They're not necessarily yeah. determining all your pieces and parts. There's septic, septic implications for this. There's yeah. the 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 structure. Mm -hmm. To me, is easy. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's just it's, can we put the building there? It's all the pieces and parts. That's what the wetlands people are yep. say. Oh, no, you can't do this. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, done, done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they might say something about a sand pile again, too. That's right. Mm -hmm. right. So anyway. Okay. Okay, so, thank you. Okay. Everyone's good with this? Yeah. Okay. So can we move to the next agenda item? Do we need a motion to dissolve that committee, or does it just... Disappear. I think we probably need a motion. Yeah, I, I to okay, sure. Make a motion. Make the motion to kick the bastards out. No, I mean dissolve to, the to dissolve the committee. That's yeah, bad. the garage more, more 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 committee. GFIC. GFIC. You made the motion. We have a second. Yes. Sir. Oh, Zoe second. Okay, let's have more discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? Oh no, okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have they do have it. Um, so the next agenda item is update on road report repairs from storm damage. So the road potholes on North Street from right from potholes are not storm damage. <laughs> <laughs> that actually came up at the FEMA meeting last week. That, or on Friday that to clarify potholes are not storm damage. I mean, are you really just three or four lanes from the road? I drive right by one every day. Drive slowly. Mm hmm I know where it is and I avoid it. Okay. Um, Horn of the Moon is really the biggest. Yeah. Problem. Yeah, that yeah. we're that they've been working on, and they have been working on that. Um, the main delay from opening it really is not East Montpelier; it's that the contractor is working on a culvert near the dam. Yeah. They expect to have that done over this weekend, so the road crew expects to open the road then Monday afternoon or Tuesday okay. of next week. And then um, I attended the FEMA applicant. Just push it is, that yes. the, is that the only road left in East Montpelier that's impassable? Sander Circle is impassable, but oh, Sander sure. Circle will remain impassable for the foreseeable future until we get a design Where see for Sander Circle is that? Where there's a What's very that? large culvert that's well, not there. I know, there I mean, yet. I haven't driven, I haven't driven down there. Where on, on the circle is it? It's you on, drive around the back side. Yeah, it's on the back side. If I could only have one of the moon. Take a right. Okay, which I go around. No, I know, I, I've run that many times. Oh, after you, I know the road. Yeah, you, yeah, after you get around the edge of that circle, it's on the back side of the circle. Okay. Is it an uphill or downhill from that spur road, that dead end road, whose name I always forget? Yeah, it's downhill from that. Yeah. 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 Okay. I believe. I haven't seen it, but I know where the road you're talking about. This was a particular one that we met with the uh, um, river scientist, and we discussed, and this one just, it, it needs to be completely redone, and it's going to be a rather involved okay. project. So, and the road is passable for all residents. You just may, maybe typically would have yeah. gone right, and you're going to need to go left if you're from there and head around the circle. So it's not a big impact to residents. Oh, so it's maybe a couple minutes. Yeah, the road is... Okay. It's a circle, so they just can't <laughs> drive the whole circle. No, no, no. Um, but, so, it's, um, so, it's, oh, so it's not passable? No. No, no it's not passable. Out. No. Okay. No, I, I know every house on there. Yeah. So you built most of it. So. It doesn't look like I can't die. The current uh, yeah, plan is knows. to put some Jersey barriers there okay. to, to okay. make sure it's very clear the road is closed. Next step on ones like this, on Sparrow Farm, on Sodom Pond, are going to be, we're going to have to get an engineer. So that'll be another discussion because, as you all know, Doug Newton was the previous engineer for everyone in central Vermont and is no longer with us. So uh, Chase and Chase has staffed up to perform that work. So at some point I'll be coming to you because we will need to get plans. I mean, we can't move forward on any of these until until 
the river scientists tell us what size culvert we need to have in the area, and then an engineer designs how that culvert needs to be in that area. So um, those will be kind of future because we have temporary permit permits on Sodom Pond Circle and on Sparrow Farm um, to just basically fill those areas in right now, but that is not a permanent. So one question I have for FEMA is not only will we be reimbursed for these temporary costs, what is the timing and what is the process for designing the permanent fix and then being funded for that as well. What does filling it in temporarily look like on Sparrow Farm Road? I'm, I'm afraid any temporary solution would end up mostly in the creek. Uh, it's really just filling it in. Filling Guthrie has a plan. Yeah, yeah. My impression. Unfortunately, with that one, I mean, that's a, it's funny. They mentioned Friday at the meeting, it was thrown out that, you know those areas where you have an 18-inch culvert and you really shouldn't have an 18-inch culvert? You need a lot more than that? And that's exactly what Sparrow Farm is. I mean, it's it's wild to see that little pipe coming out. Yeah. Um, but uh, Guthrie has a plan. I can't remember the specific details right now. That was approved by the river scientist um, to, um, yeah, we have temporary permits on both Sodom, Sodom Pond is done. So, um, that, so having temporary permits means that River Scientists have signed off? Oh, yeah. Permit. They issued us the temporary permits. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, yeah. We have the temporary permits on those, but the thing is they are temporary fixes. Those are not considered the permanent fix. So next step would be the permanent fix. So that's a question that I have for FEMA, but I was in an hour-long meeting that was already at two hours, so I just okay. will save that question for when I'm actually speaking with FEMA. So the next thing to let you all know is after that meeting, um, I submitted officially for our request for public assistance, RPA is what everyone calls it, for the town to be included for this event, DR4720. Okay. We have not been approved just yet, but that the state approves us, and that, that was the big message delivered at the is meeting. That is that for we, the FEMA, FEMA money or state? That's for the FEMA money. So they left the meeting. We, the biggest thing they impressed upon us is the main thing we need to do is just do that step. I just hadn't done it yet because I knew I was going to go to this meeting. And just in case they said anything I wanted to hear before I click submit, yeah. I waited. Okay. So So I'm, I'm sorry for the minutes I missed. Uh, you said it's still working on Horn of the Moon. And, and what's the hold up there? Uh, the, there is a contractor working on a culvert near the dam that mm -hmm. we have nothing to do with. It's okay outside of our of our scope but that's been part of the delay okay. we can't get the road open because it's closed there regardless right. so but the road crew is currently working through um, getting that so the contractor is supposed to be done over the weekend the road crew is going to finish up then their pieces and parts kind of closer to that and then open the road Monday afternoon or Tuesday so is it accurate to say that the road crew is continuing to work on yes. the East Montpelier part of the road. Yes. And uh, yes. even if they finished, uh, it couldn't open right away because of the work done. Correct. On yeah. The Montpelier yeah. side. Okay. Yeah. So we'll be on the line for FEMA. Just to, so you all know, what I was told Friday is next steps. Once we once it's approved, obviously they're compiling all of this. We will be assigned. Um, someone that's with FEMA and someone that's with the state. Um, I was told we will have a preliminary conversation with FEMA to just talk through what our damage is at a very high level. Then we will have a multi-hour meeting where FEMA will come and we will actually pour over everything from all the pictures, the lists. So I talked to Guthrie this morning um, because ideally Guthrie's a part of that meeting, so he can directly relay any information or answer any questions they may have. At that time is when, essentially, I will have my own spreadsheet, but FEMA, we will actually start feeding data into the official FEMA spreadsheet, and then believe it's we have 60 days after that document is kind of crafted to oh, we forgot this road, you know, you can yeah. adjust what's on that list, but then after that point, that's your list. Yeah. Well, what a learning curve. Yeah. yeah. So well, did you, little did you realize yeah. you were going to be a FEMA expert or well-versed? Well, I thought you. the Christmas storm was bad. Well, thank yeah. you for doing all this. So 
you submitted the, the RPA, the Request for Public Assistance, Correct. from FEMA to the state. Well, it's I submitted that to FEMA. To FEMA, but the state approved. The state it. actually approves okay. it. Correct. Okay. And um, and then after that's approved, you have these meetings with FEMA, or Correct. is this okay? Yeah. So. After it's approved, at some point in the coming, who knows how long, um, FEMA will reach out. Okay. And schedule a time for us to have an initial intake and then have the deep dive into everything that we have going on. So the approval of the RPA is merely saying you can go ahead with the process. It's just putting us details with FEMA. It's okay. putting us in the queue. Okay. It's lumping us in. I think a hundred towns so far have submitted uh -huh. what she said. And, yeah. Well, not excuse me, towns and organizations. So organizations can also submit. Fire department will be on that list as well at some point. What happened to the fire department? They can be on the list for reimbursement for their response oh, okay. to the storm. Okay. But they didn't have much. They say they had some. Oh, they had? Sure. Wait. Okay. We done with that? Uh, uh, okay, thank you. Um, update on County Road events proposal. I think did everyone read Larry's email? I did. Mm -hmm. And I understand what he's saying. It's like turned into... I mean, I think he's very well-meaning, and he just didn't imagine that it would be such a convoluted process to get this approved. Well, I want to emphasize, I've talked to him about this, yeah. and, uh, and what he said to me privately also was reflected in the letter. I want to emphasize that he said, uh, so just for the record, um, Larry Gilbert sent a letter to the select board uh, saying that uh, after we discussed at a previous meeting that they did not want to have another county road uh, open roads event in um, August because the flood, everybody's so sensitive and busy with other things, uh, but maybe September and October. They, they went back and, and thought about it after the discussion and they said, I, I don't want to do it this year at all. Uh, but he did say in the letter that if not for the flood, it would be a different conversation and that he wanted to leave the door open for doing it again next year or, as he put in the letter, I think, if and when things uh, return to normal. So this may not be the last week we've heard of it. Yeah, I just don't think it's completely the flood, though. I think it's all the steps that he didn't think he was going to have to go through to make this an event. He, he's somewhat, he was naive to the ramifications of what he was proposing. He, he didn't expect yeah. it to be right. uh, so much a... So honorous a process. Yes, yeah. yes. And, and, and whatever, for, you know, I'm not but, defending but that was not saying de that's what I think. That was not definitive for his decision, though. No, but no. Just want that's to make just that my clear. take on it. Yeah. <laughs> so whatever. So that's not going to happen. Any other questions on that? Uh, the next thing is curb cut applications. This is really a field access um, okay. for 1500 US Route, 2, uh, US Route 14 North. So he can access his property from Daggett Road. Um, and in order to access his field, it's the most efficient way to, to get there. So is asking for a curb cut to provide field access to his field that is on Daggett Road. So you don't usually need a curb cut for that. Field. I'm dead set against it. What's that? I'm dead set against it. Okay. Well, he okay. actually submitted this after discussing it with um, oh, with the okay. road foreman. So. Okay. Well, then I'm definitely, definitely. And Guthrie did review this and approve it. You need to vote against it. Get something tonight. <laughs> so, on the construct a new access column. There's an option of checking agricultural, but it's yeah. checked right. for residential. Residential yeah, does I, require a select board approval. I know that, but I mean, she's I, field. Well, he's not a farm, so that may be why I think <laughs> that they saw. I thought the same thing as well, but I think that because he's not necessarily a farm, he's just trying to access his field to. Uh -huh. I make the motion to Thank accept you. the curb cut. Okay. Does, it, does that include the blank page? What's the fourth page? Ah, oh, gotta leave the blank page. <laughs> I don't know if I can 
haven't seen anyone who's written to reject it, but are we missing something? I'm being facetious. No. Scott's just being Scott. Oh. Yeah. That's it. You took it seriously. Okay. He, 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 he just made the motion. He thinks so Scott made a motion. Yeah. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Okay, now we can have discussion. <laughs> well, well, yeah. I, I think it's fine. We're not voting against anything. Well, you could be voting against it. I could, but I'm not. Oh, okay. Well, I, I wasn't looking for pre knowledge of your vote. I mean, that's not democratic. Okay. Um, so there's no more discussion? No. Okay. <laughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it. They do have it. Okay. So gonna, that is application number 23 dash 030. I'm going to put Scott down and voting against it just, just for the fun. No, no. I saw him raise his hand. <laughs> <laughs> I will have to, I'll have to adjust the minutes. <laughs> um, so we have warrants here. And you have the original of the curb cut set there. I do, right here. If you could pass that around. Okay, I will. I'll do that right now. So today is the 7th, is it not? It is. Yeah, no, it is the 7th. Okay. What's this here? That's oh. the oh, financial phone. questionnaire yes. for you to sign. You've already, you guys already approved it, but. So am I just supposed to sign it? Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay. And did did the don't know get changed to a yes or a no or? I think she no. put it as no because they actually did not attend any okay. meeting. She may not. She got an answer to that. She probably printed that before. Yeah, it says don't know. Can I just go to you? Yes. yes. It all, Thank you. All paper and roads need to do. The next one's here, this one. Okay, there's that. Now, this is, these are the warrants. Does that just need your signature, Seth? No. Nope. It needs all of us, I believe. No, the, he's talking about the one there. Yes. Oh, that's just the, a, I mean. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, because that's we'd already approved it, I guess, last meeting as well. Gina said. Um, a lot of gravel bills. Yeah. Just so you know, a lot of the costs that are directly related to the storm, we are coding directly to a FEMA account at yeah. the advice of our external auditors. FEMA account that's currently budgeted at zero. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. They suggested that we do that just to keep the that cost. They're easily identified Absolutely. for any costs that are. When he knows he's using an entire load of material or whatever the case may be, then just have it there. We obviously yeah. have some that, especially at the beginning, came out of stock. But the other thing they did mention um, last week at the meeting was. You know, even if you're using a culvert from stock, when you buy that new culvert, that new culvert essentially is your FEMA cost. Um, so I, there's going to be more cleanup, I'm sure, as we start going through this to, to reconcile all the costs. But, sure. but we set this up right away. Um, we have very good external auditors, so they sent us an email very shortly after the flood and said, hey, uh, just to give you a heads up. It would be smart and make sense to go ahead and set up a, a FEMA account. Sure. So we did that immediately, provided that account number to Guthrie so that he could, right. he essentially started using it right off the bat for anything that he was buying that was directly related to right. recovering from the event. So I just mentioned our external auditors, uh, yeah. Sullivan and Powers, they will be on site next week and they will be essentially doing all of the on-site work uh, for the audit next week. 
And then, I don't, I can skip over the next one because then we can get into the debris thing, but um, two zoning permits were issued since the last meeting. In addition, basically both were additions to homes. Um, I will be on vacation the last week in August. And I'm not planning, I'm planning to actually take an eight hour at least day away from this office for the first time in over a year. So um, I will be making every attempt to, to not come in here. FEMA may be the only thing that I would alter my schedule like for some. I'd like to hold some. you to that. Um, so, technically, kind of, I, we have debris. I have a note in here about debris removal. I wanted to talk to the select board. I think previously it had been discussed that we would not be participating in debris removal, but the state seems to have a pretty good process in place. Um, and it's a question for the select board of would you like me to reach out to the state contact Stephen Young, who I think Seth has been in communication with, to uh, pick up debris in town. I guess if there's a need and it's not that big a deal, well, I guess we could do it. I mean, it doesn't sound like the hazardous waste thing is an issue, because I don't know what they do when people bring paint cans out of the cellar and say, take them away. I, I don't know how that Well, what, um, what, uh, Seth provided an email um, that he received from Stephen Young when he came tonight. What he explained in this email to you, Seth, is what Dan, and I don't recall the last name, that he yeah. came here today from Central Vermont Solid Waste, said to me, there are two contractors, Cirrus and Tetra Tech, who are involved in this process, um, and they're essentially doing all that needs to be done to get full FEMA reimbursement for this debris removal. The impact to the town should be relatively small, anywhere from 2.5% to 7.5% of the total cost. How much need we have, I don't know. Yeah. Um, direct calls to here have not been that many. Yeah. Some of what we hear is more secondhand information of someone else coming in for something else and, hey, someone has a bunch of has debris. So... What I was thinking today was one approach we could take if you wanted to pursue debris removal is, number one, I can reach out to the person from the state and get on this list. And then from what I understood today, this person will then get me in contact with these contractors who will then come and meet with us and get the ball rolling. However, I think also what we need to do is simultaneously put a post out on Front Porch Forum is the best means I can think of to reach out to people and say, if you have need for debris removal, please call the town office. I would ask Rosie, um, Rosie's actually called in, um, but I would ask Rosie to please create that list for us, um, names, addresses, who has debris that they would like picked up. Once I speak with the contractors and I know the timing, we'll continue putting posts out to state, okay, here's the plan, here's when they're gonna come, I would give people a deadline to let us know that you need debris removed, and all this will be driven by the timing the contractors tell me. And then here's when it'll get picked up. That's the best approach I can think to take. Um, I have some reports from 211 of who's called in, but if you've looked at those reports, they're not, if they're, they're driven by mailing address. So they're not necessarily inclusive of all of our actual East Montpelier right. residents that may need help. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So um, there's so Coburn the is Plainfield. What's, um, what's the lead time on this? Uh, it's, so, it's not. It's kind of short, I think. The what do you say? Is, is it going to take a month? I don't think so because these contractors are not going to be here, I don't think, a month from now. No. They're coming to the end of this right now. So when I attended the last emergency briefing, that's one of the things they were saying is we're coming to the end of this of this process. So once these contractors are, once the state releases them and they're gone, they're gone. Really? So really? we would have to then contract with right. a Casella or someone like that. But the one thing that the gentleman that came today did tell me is the reason these two contractors are involved is Cirrus is the one picking up the debris, but Tetra Tech is the one doing all the documentation that's going to be needed for FEMA. So some of the initial trash removal that was done in Montpelier, where they just went and started picking things up, 
They were then having to go in on the backside and try to sift through all of that because it was not done in a FEMA compliant way. So this is all very FEMA compliant way, but we are, we're probably looking at a few weeks and these people will be exiting the state. Yeah, That's we, it. We, we talked about this in the last meeting or the prior. How, I mean, this, this is going to be work for you. This is a whole rigmarole. Is, yeah. it, is it really necessary? I mean, is, I is there demand? If I, I told the guy it wasn't, and he got kind of huffy. So then I said, okay, just send me an email, and I'll bring it to me. Did you put, put out the thing on front porch for him saying yeah. we're not going to do this? I did. Yeah. Well, from, yeah, from what I, I was I, told. I yeah. So here's my take on that. And yes, of course, this is work for me. But if our residents need help, yeah. and need this debris removed, then we need to do this, is my opinion as a town administrator and as a resident. <laughs> so, well, the other thing um, about it is it's not the hazardous waste thing that, that we were kind of grappling with before. It doesn't look like we have to provide a place for hazardous waste, which is what our concern was. We don't have a facility for hazardous waste. Well, that seemed like a, a structured proposal, the hazardous waste dumpster. That seemed a little bit less controlled. Well, this is just, this we just call it debris. But the question you're going to get is a flooded cellar. Can I bring my stuff out of my flooded Well, cellar? a lot of these will be. I, I mean, know. it it is going to be my basement flooded, and I know. you know that. But that qualifies. Um, so that's the thing I well, mentioned to the guy today paint was, cans, well, if paint cans were in your. Well, there still could be hazardous waste in this process, and we would. That's why I would want to talk to Stephen Young first before I even put a post on front yeah. porch for him because I need to know what to tell the residents to do yeah. because I do believe they still need to separate that debris. So if there are paint cans and things that are considered hazard yeah. hazardous waste, they need to be in two separate boxes. I would hope so. Yes. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I mean, the other thing that needs to be stressed too is the stuff has to go in the right away because FEMA yes. can't come up proper property. Yes. Yes. How, it has to be by the rope. How worried are we that people will take advantage of this to say, oh, I've got all this junk in my garage. I, right. I was right. going to right. by the side of the road and buy plastic bags. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. brought this last time. Other well, town was so going to say, oh, he's the lump healer. He's got the thing. Let's just... Well, we don't have, it's not the dumpster thing that we're thinking of. This yeah. is a little bit different process. Right. But the state comes along with a grapple truck or whatever right. it is, yeah. put it in the yeah. back of a truck. So and I think, it's a little different I than what we envisioned. Most, my understanding is I think Essentially, I won't even say most that all other towns have done this and taken the state up on this. So, okay. well, if you want to do that, that sounds like it's a, it's yeah. a really good plan. Yeah. Yeah. Is it, is, do they guarantee how much FEMA? Will, oh, do they guarantee how much reimbursement FEMA will give? Because it looks like well, well in the email that that Seth received, they said that we'd be looking at it's the anywhere from two and a half to seven and a half because that's really the difference. Yeah, for our costs. That's really the difference between FEMA reimbursing 75% or 90%. The state believes it's probably going to go the 90% route uh -huh. um, because of the amount of damage. That it's we a minimal have. cost for us for uh, providing right. some service that maybe we should be, is what you're saying. Uh, if people getting... have a need, I mean, uh, someone commented to me today that, you know, this could certainly open up. A whole other can of worms right. of we've yeah. said we weren't going to do this. How many people potentially have done this on their own dime? Yeah, yeah. And now we are. So I, you know, I. And somebody's going to say I paid for this, and now. Right now, are we? Yeah. 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 Well, are, are there so many people um, like asking for help? Calls? Not lately. There Should haven't be been as many calls lately. No. What's that? I don't believe many calls are coming in now. No, so I don't, I don't know what response. We could do this, yeah. put a post on front porch for them, and three people call. Yeah. Right. yeah I mean, it, it could be. It's like it's come to our attention that we can do this. You know, maybe this would be helpful or whatever. Right. We don't. Is, is there a need? Is, is there a need? We really we're like to serve the residents. If there's a need, we're, we're, we're investigating. Like, we're investigating. We're yeah. And we'll office do office something for you. You know, it's like you can make the message sound. There may be an opportunity. You yeah, can make the message sound like we're not exactly backtracking. We're just trying to work through so the process. Right. Yeah. 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 Backtrack if we didn't have the information yeah. before. Which is yeah. honestly true. true. I mean, yeah. I think right. what's tough yeah. is, is we don't we don't have that road that you're driving down, and the whole road flooded. You know, we may have one, or you know, we, we have you can count them on one hand the ones that you yeah. can very visibly see. The flooded basements, we don't necessarily directly, you know, right. see. And we're, and we're politicians, so we're not always supposed to tell the truth. <laughs> Someone said that the other day. It's like, right. really? Right. So we wanted, I do we resent it. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a naive person. Mm -hmm. And I don't think every politician is crooked. Okay. 
As an elected think, official, I want to destigmatize the word politician. <laughs> that's right. That's, <laughs> right. <laughs> that's very good, Carl. But, uh, I like but the we, word. <laughs> we, we also, uh, you know, we also make decisions that we need to rethink, and we need to have the courage to, uh, when we get more information, to rethink. But we're really decision. not rethinking the decision. We're, it's a little bit of a curve in the road. Yeah, it's and a different that, decision. It's a different thing. That's we're, we're rethinking. Yeah. We're rethinking. We're making a slight turn. Yeah, we have a new opportunity. We have a different opportunity yes, that's yes. come to our attention. Yes. So that's yeah, what we need to do. That, yeah. Okay. You good? Yeah. Okay. Never been better. I wasn't asking you. <laughs> uh, okay. So what's the next thing? We've got the so other business. The next thing is we have a fire department meeting on Thursday. So yes. the question is now. Oh, yeah. oh Ro Rosie had a comment I saw pop up. Oh, Rosie, Rosie had a screen. comment? Do you, do you want to read that, Gina? Oh. Do you have access to Oh, I don't to have it. it. Oh, do you have a comment? No, it's, no, it's, it's not on the Zoom meeting. So Rosie said there are still at least two residents who need assistance getting rid of debris. Okay. So two. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Rosie. So that would work, really. I mean, because... If it's only two out. or three, to me, that's fine. It's yeah. worth the effort to help those two yeah. or three residents yeah. clear out their debris. Especially because it's different than what we're envisioning. It's not a dumpster right. setting up that we have to sort through and put the hydrant away somewhere. It's a truck that's mm -hmm. going to come along and pluck the stuff off the front lawn. Okay. Right. Thanks, Rosie. That's helpful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Steve, did you want to comment on this? Is that why you lit up your screen? No. Okay. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I have a mattress and a box spring and a rug that got wet. I don't think it's a burden for the town. I left it on the floor and it was raining. So, you know, why should uh, my neighbors have to uh, subsidize my uh, uh, lack of uh, foresight? Mm -hmm. Yeah, how about my payload? Yeah, that we, we're to fix? We, we might hear that from others, too. <laughs> thank, yeah. you, thank you for your honesty. Yeah. Um, okay. Thanks. So, did you want to talk about the fire department? Maybe? Well, I think that was part of, uh, I, I brought that up, uh, um, and yeah, um, just to, to reiterate, on Thursday at 6.30, I believe, there's going to be a meeting in Montpelier at uh, Vermont College of Fine Arts, big, big hall, noble hall, and uh, it'll be about what do we do about downtown Montpelier when we keep getting flooded out like this, and that will be of considerable interest to many people who use Montpelier as their city. Uh, so I wanted to just check the temperature in the room about people's interest in either, I mean, it's kind of late with both CALS and the fire department board uh, planning to come to Thursday's meeting, but, you know, in emergencies we, we do change things. Uh, do we want to see about postponing the fire department meeting, which isn't urgent, it's just a routine meeting that we have several times a year, or do we want to uh, say some of us will go to one, some of us will go to the other? I don't think we should postpone the meeting uh, in East Montpelier, but I'm not. Well, as some people, are you conflicted on which meeting to go to? I am not. I have a board meeting that I'm going to be in Montpelier for, and I'm just going to go up to the Montpelier one. So, so you won't be at the fire department meeting? I will not. Okay. I'm sorry to attend the next one. And Zoe, are you going to the fire department meeting? I was planning on coming to the fire department meeting because I know I have to learn a lot about what's going on. Yeah. So we have two, we have two representatives. I'll be there. Okay. I'll we'll say one thing about the fire department. In light of the flood, I do think there are some topics that could be discussed no, as well with the fire mm -hmm. department. They did stop by here last week. We had a conversation. I, I believe there could be some value in meeting with them Thursday night. Um, if anything, to talk about, yes, the regular stuff that's done, the financials and all that kind of fun stuff, but also somewhat of a recap of the – because there was really no collaboration between the town and the fire department throughout this flood. Well, I don't um, know what is it supposed to be. I mean, what what are we talking seems about? Seems odd to me that, What's that there's no communication between the town office and the, that's, the fire department. Yeah, well, I mean that's part service. of a larger conversation about having our fire our essential fire services provided by an independent organization that we don't have control over the board or the hiring or, or anything of. So why I don't understand. Well, I was asked last week why you know that while well, the comment was made, no one's called us. And I threw back, well, no one called me either. So, no, well, so, what, but they get called if there's a fire or there's somebody needs to go to the ambulance. 
there was some criticism about there was no reaching out across the aisle to the fire department okay. to communicate what, with them to, after to the flood. Basements or yeah, I, I don't know what their role. We would didn't be. get into specifics. Put cones on washouts or help the road crew. I, I'm not really sure what they're That's talking about. Hence my point of it would be worthwhile to have a discussion okay. with them. Yeah. Sure. We'll find out. And so, okay, so your question was answered. Yes. Are you going to the Montpelier? I'll thing? go to the Montpelier one. Okay. So it's just Zoe and I, maybe John. Okay. And the only other thing we have is a personnel, personnel matter. matter. So and that will be the executive session. Yes. Okay. I move to go into executive session to discuss a personnel matter for VSA. Is there further discussion? Uh, no. <laughs> All those in favor, please say aye. Aye, aye, aye. The ayes appear to have it, they do have it. Um, the select board has emerged from executive session at 7.57. Was I supposed to allow you to say that? No, you can say it. Yeah, okay. And, uh, I, I don't have to have center stage. We, we have decided to extend a temporary arrangement with an employee. Sounds good. I move we adjourn. I second the motion. Oh, very good. Is there further discussion on the motion to adjourn? It's not, it's not, <laughs> it's not a motion that's up for discussion. You can't, you can't discuss it's not? it. It's not? I thought every motion was. Not, not a motion, not, not in Germany. Oh, not Sounds in Germany. Sounds like you're discussing it. No, he, he is, but there's not. Oh, okay. Not a, All in favor, please say aye.